Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for the second episode of Let's Make a Game with Game Maker Studio 2. In the previous episode we established a room in which we can pan around the object core and we can also zoom out or zoom in with limitations. Today I want to do a few more things with the window itself. I want to be able to go into full screen mode but also to change to a couple of resolutions and after that we might see if we have the time for something else. What I also want you to do is to give me examples of games we could go for. We just need to have a basic game concept and I haven't really established that. I was kind of hoping that you guys can also give your two cents to the topic and maybe we can come up with something great. Anyways, let's go ahead and have a look at the window size. This bad boy is on the step event of our object core, which is at all times present. What I want to do right here is two things. First of all, I want to be able to switch into full screen, but I also want to be able to change the resolutions. And we're gonna go with three resolutions. We're gonna go with the worst one, which is 360p, then 720p and 1080p for the time being. Of course, we can also go with other resolutions, whatever we want. Let's set up the full screen functionality first of all. Let's say if we press Alt Enter, then we want to switch into full screen. That's kind of a common keyboard combination. Therefore, we need to do an if keyboard check statement. So the check statement itself, I think, triggers when you have something pressed. I'm not sure what the difference between check and pressed is, but I tested this code and it didn't work with pressed, so I'm not sure. Anyways, we're gonna say VK alt. So instead of an ORD, which would be a letter, we're gonna go with an inbuilt variable here, the VK alt, which is the alt key, of course. But also we want to do a keyboard check for a uh, released. So after we release the enter key, then I want this to happen. What do I want to happen? I want to toggle between full screen and the resolution we were in. That means, first of all, we have to check are we in full screen or not. So let's say if window get full screen. So this is basically checking if it's full screen, true or false. And if that is the case, then we want to set window uh, set full screen false. Basically, if this if condition is true, the full screen is true, then we want to set the full screen to false. And of course, else we want to do the window set full screen to true. There we go. I believe that's all we need in order to do that. Let's actually test it. Here we go. We have our 720p window and now we can hit Alt Enter. Oh, geez. Okay, that messes a little bit with my recording software, but it, it is essentially working. Okay, let's not do that again. Jeez. Great, now let's go ahead and do the resolutions. Uh, for the time being, I'm just gonna assign it to a key, but of course that's something we would want to set up in the menu eventually. Good, let's say we're gonna use the up key. Why the heck not? So we're gonna say if keyboard check released VK up, then we want to switch to the next resolution. So we basically have to check which resolution are we at? So we could actually do a case statement. In my testing, I did it with an if and then if else statement. It actually doesn't really matter. Maybe I'm gonna switch it to a case statement in the end, but for the time being, let's do if window height is equal to 720, which is the standard height we start at. And of course, we established this variable in the first episode in the create event. Now, if that is the case, then we want to go ahead and set the window height. No, let's do width first. The window width to the next possible resolution, which is 1980. And the window height is going to be uh, 1080. Now we switch down and we say else if window height equals 1080. Then we want to go ahead and set the window width to the lowest resolution, which is, um, let me think, 640 by 3. 360 I think. Window height equals 360. There we go. The last possibility for the time being is if window height equals to 360 then we want the window width to be equal to 1280 and the window height to be equal to 720. There we go. That should be it. However, these are only variables. Now, of course, we have to go right here in order to actually set the dimensions. So we're going to do that with window set size. 
And we can see we need the width and the height. And of course, we save that in window width and window height. There we go. Last but not least, we need to set the window position newly because we want to have it in the center. We established that the previous episode. We're going to do it with the same code, basically. So that's going to be monitor width divided by 2 minus window width divided by 2. I'm going to do the monitor height divided by 2 minus window height divided by 2. Two. Beautiful. And I believe that's already everything we need for that. Let's actually go ahead and test it out. So here we are in the 720p version. If I hit the arrow key, it is going to switch to 1080p. And of course, it's not full screen yet. And if I hit the arrow key once again, it's going to switch into 360p. And if I do it once again, of course, we go back to 720p. So now we could implement a switch so that we can also toggle the other way around. I wonder if that's worth it, really. Nah, I'm gonna leave it be for the time being. It's just a bit more code. And since we don't have so many resolutions, and since I want to have a clickable menu for this in the end, it doesn't matter. Oh, one thing I forgot to tell you. Oh, geez, where's my room? My room is right there. I actually made it a lot bigger. 3200 by 3200 to be exact. That's 100 squares in each direction. 100 tiles and so that is a nice area to build on and now you can actually give me ideas what could we do I mean our limitations are that it's a 2d game and also of course my interests I would like to do something that requires a little bit of building something up it doesn't have to be like a village semi it can be anything really it can be something like big pharma it can go into the direction of banished or whatever. Give me all your ideas because I really want to dive a little bit deeper into the series and I'm really lacking the creativity of ideas sometimes, especially in that category. I'm all over the place and I kind of need a project to focus on. So that would be great. Okay, guys, this is actually future Nathan quickly interjecting because I have found a more elegant solution. At least, well, I haven't found it. It just came to my mind how the switch statement works and this was the case statement I was talking about. Using this statement, the switch statement, makes sense because we are always checking for the same variable. So right here we're checking window height, window height right here as well and here as well. So switch statement makes sense in this case. Let me quickly show you what I mean. So we're gonna use the same thing right here. We're gonna use VK up so I can just copy this over, close it but this time, instead of an if statement, we're gonna use a switch statement. And the switch we want to do is with the window height. That is the variable we want to check. Now, the switch statement also needs a squirrely bracket, and then you need to have a case. So we can say, for instance, in case the window height is 720. So that's basically the same thing as here, but we can do it simply like that. And now I'm actually gonna remain on the same line as these statements are so short. So now we can set the variables just like here. I can just take these bad boys and copy them over as such. I just realized right here, of course, you don't need a semicolon, but just a double point. I always forget what it's called in English, but just the two dots and not with a comma. So now we are on the right track. After that, after this check, it's always important to add a break. Because otherwise, I think it's, it's gonna go in an infinite loop or something, or it's not continuing to the next statement. It just needs a break. So we know that this case is over. Maybe to make it a little bit more overviewish, I'm gonna make two lines, something along these lines. So now we can say in case it is 1080p, then we want to go ahead and do the same thing, but with those numbers. So window width is gonna be here and window height is gonna be 360. There we go. Oh, I also realized in the recording, of course, it's 1920 and not 1980. But yeah, what you're gonna do? We're gonna set a break here as well. Then we're gonna do the third case, which is 360. And then we take those numbers right there. Beautiful. Window height, 720, and we add a break. That's all we need for that. And of course, the last two lines we also need. We need to set the actual thingy majingies, and we do that after the switch statement. And I just realized I made a grave error here, of course. 
The squirrely bracket goes right here, and after that we want to add these two lines. So let's add that right here, beautiful. That should be it, theoretically, so we should be able to get rid of that, and we should have the same results with an easier to decipher code. I mean, it's not important in this case, so you can do it however you like, but the switch statement always offers itself when you are checking one type of variable over and over again. Just to be sure, let's test it. So we are in 720p at the moment, 1080p, yeah, works like a charm. Beautiful. So now it's time to wrap up the episode, but let uh, past Nathan do the wrapping up. Bye, guys. But yeah, I think thematically it makes sense to wrap up the episode at this point. I mean, these episodes don't have to be 20 minutes always. So sometimes they're gonna be 10 minutes, sometimes they're gonna be 30 minutes, depending on what topic we're at. I just want to make sure that it thematically makes sense. So with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye-bye.